In this video, we're going to present the solution to question 11 from the practice midterm exam number one for math 2270. And so we are given a transformation which goes from Z72 to Z73, and it's given by the following rule. T of x1, x2 is given as x1 plus 4x2, 2x1 plus 5x2, and 3x1 plus 6x2. Now our function is something that's gonna be working mod seven here. So we go from mod seven with two entries to mod seven with three entries. But the fact that we're working mod seven really isn't gonna have much bearing on this calculation whatsoever. So for this consideration, let say X be the vector X1, X2, and let Y be the vector Y1, Y2. And so these are vectors that belong to Z7 squared. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at t of x plus y. To show, to prove that this is a linear transformation, we have to show that the transformation preserves vector addition, which is what we're gonna be doing right now. So notice that t, uh, t x by give above is just x1, x2, and y is just y1, y2. And so adding these together, we end up with the vector x1 plus y1, and then x2 plus y2. And so now we're going to apply the definition of the function itself. So this function will create a vector in z73. So there's three components, where the first component, you're going to take the first entry plus four times the second entry. So we're going to get x1 plus y1 plus four times x2 plus y2. So for the second entry, we're gonna take two times the first input plus five times the second input. So we get two times x1 plus y1 plus five times x2 plus y2. And then for the last one, we're gonna take three times the first input plus six times the second input. So we get three times x1 plus y1 plus six times x2 plus y2. So that's what it means to evaluate the trans uh, the transformation at the input vector x1 plus y1 and x2 plus y2. So what I'm going to next do is distribute these coefficients. So we're going to end up with an x1 plus y1 plus 4x2 plus 4y2. Uh, next we're going to get 2x1 plus 2y1. We're going to get 5x2 plus 5y2. And then lastly, we're going to get 3x1 plus 3y1 plus 6x2 plus 6y2, like so. So we just distribute this coefficients. I'm then going to add together uh, the common x's and y's, right? So notice we can break this, this thing up in the following way. We're going to have an x1 plus 4x2. We're going to have a 2x1 plus 5x2, and we're going to have a 3x1 plus 6x2. So I just wrote all of the x's in a single vector. And then I'm going to do the same thing for y. You have the y1 plus 4y2. We have a 2y1 plus 5y2. And then lastly, we have a 3y1 plus a 6y2, which the first vector listed, that's just t of x, x1, x2. And then the second one's just t of y1, y2, which we know, whoops, which we know that's just going to be t of x plus t of y. So we've now demonstrated that this transformation preserves vector addition. Uh, we want to do the same thing for scalar multiplication. So we're going to take t of c times x. Well, x, remember, is just the vector x1, x2. So if you times that by a scalar, you end up with cx1 and cx2. And so let's apply the definition of the function here. So our function is going to take the first entry, cx1, and add to it 4 times the second input, cx2. So for the, for the second output, we're going to take 2 times cx1 plus 5 c of x2. And then for the third output, we get 3 times cx1 plus 6 times cx2. 
Now notice that everything in entry one of this vector is divisible by C. So let's factor that out. So you get C times x1 plus 4x2. Everything in the second entry is divisible by C, so we can factor that out. C times 2x1 plus 5x2. And then everything in the third entry is also divisible by C, so we factor that out, leaving 3x1 plus 6, 6x2. Now, since everything in, in all three entries is divisible by C, we can take it out. So that's just scalar multiplication right there. So you get x1 plus 4x2, 2x1 plus 5x2, and then 3x1 plus 6x2. And you can see that this vector right here is just t of x1, x2. And what do you know? That is just c of t of x. And so then what we have now done is that this shows that t is a linear transformation. So therefore, t is a linear transformation. We just have to show that it preserves addition and scalar multiplication. And that's what we've now done, transformation.